A new type of hybrid craft can outperform any conventional battery electric vehicle. Utilizing fuel cells, the Sirius Jet will offer a 650 mile range for five passengers. But is this truly the propulsion system of the future? Today's lithium ion batteries have an energy density of around 300 watt hours per kilogram. However, Jet A fuel, which is a standard fuel for aviation, has a density of around 12,000 watt hours per kilogram. The emergence of solid state batteries could see these numbers get a little bit comparatively better, but there's also other factors involved as well, such as the speed of the aircraft that you want and the amount of fuel you have to carry. Having an open rotor design on a turbine is very important in efficiency when it comes to landing and taking off vertically. If you take the large blades away, then you're eliminating the efficiency, and this is really bad for a hybrid VTOL system. And the problem with a very large turbine is that it's really expensive. However, there are a couple of tricks you can use to increase the flight time of an electric VTOL. Joby Aviation has already showcased an impressive prototype which can reach 150 miles with just a pure tilt rotor design. If produced at a cheap cost, it could become a viable option for short range travel. But as of right now, it kind of stops at that one hour flight time. And anything over that, you would need some sort of hybrid propulsion system to overcome electric limitations. The Cavrit X7 is also a very interesting vehicle because it can utilize a morphing wing design. It has 14 powerful lift fans with a transforming wing. The pusher prop takes over in horizontal flight and maximizes flight time. However, this one's a little bit different because an additional gas turbine can increase the range to 500 miles. This would charge the electrical system as it's flying. It's an indeed a very complex balancing act, not only economically, but in weight distribution as well. A supplemental turbo generator would be expensive, so incorporating one into a cheaper electric vehicle means that you're increasing the price of the vehicle. And ultimately, the setup would have to be cheaper than a turbo shaft engine, such as one incorporated into a helicopter. An effective way to kind of get around this is to utilize additive manufacturing. And a smaller gas turbine would definitely be a step forward for advancing this technology. Rolls-Royce is currently producing a turbo generator unit which can go between 500 and 1200 kilowatts. It's an intriguing development and even big players like Sikorsky are jumping on this idea. Their variant would utilize a tilt rotor design with an overall weight of 9000 pounds and a 1200 kilowatt turbo generator, it can fly over 500 miles. Utilizing large electric motors, it will definitely showcase whether or not this kind of design is actually feasible. The other method to developing a hybrid vehicle is to utilize hydrogen fuel. Now, this is a very interesting element because it's significantly higher than most conventional fuels and batteries when it comes to gravimetric energy density. This makes hydrogen a very attractive option for applications where weight is a critical factor. You can use hydrogen in the combustor of a turbine, or you can go the way of a fuel cell, which is around 60%. We know this process works, and Zero Avia has already incorporated a hydrogen fuel cell electric powertrain. The downside to all this is that you require a hefty cryogenic tank, and there's a long list of infrastructure that is needed just to produce this stuff. So we kind of have to be skeptical when startups start to say that they're working on a feasible hydrogen vehicle. Is it going to immediately work at every airport or city? Well, probably not. Nevertheless, the Sirius Jet can bring the range up to 650 miles with five passengers. In theory, this would be over three times the range of current electric battery technology. And that is significant, but it's also a selling point as well. So there are three different types of VTOLs out there when it comes to personal aircraft. We have the all electric kind of electric motor design. Then we have the gas turbine or turbo generator, which would supply power to the electric system. And then hydrogen, which would utilize fuel cells and convert the chemical into electrical energy to power the motors. So the question is, which one is the best VTOL system? And I would argue that it's still the pure electric VTOL. And the reason for that is because it's economical. You're not incorporating these added costs of infrastructure for hydrogen or a turbine setup, which increases the range. We just want a short range electric VTOL craft. 
Now, when it comes to bigger airplanes that can carry 300 passengers, then yes, hydrogen may make sense in the future for that. But it's going to take a lot of investment in infrastructure setup to even make that viable. So we know that fuel cells are around 60% and turbines are around 35. And those are not going to dramatically increase in numbers. But the potential batteries could very well increase with technology such as solid state. And maybe in the future we'll see something like a thousand watt hour per kilogram battery. If we see that, then I think just in the perspective of VTOLs that it's going to be a superior system. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all this. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.